In my quest for making a good game, I was recently reading a chapter of The Art of Game Design by Jesse Schell on the key elements of a game that give us the experience of a game. These four elements are mechanics, story, aesthetics, and technology. Jesse Schell emphasizes that these elements are all equally important and they must be viewed together holistically. They are the building blocks of what we experience from a game. It is this experience which is absolutely essential. A game, in and of itself, is meaningless. Chess is just a board with a bunch of pieces wearing funny hats. But it's the experience from these elements that make it such a timeless game. So let's compare two games that I quite enjoyed playing before. Portal 2, which came out in 2011, and Stronghold 2, which came out in 2005. Having said that, Portal 2 did get much stronger reviews Let's find out why. First up, the mechanics of a game. Portal 2 is brilliant in that it uses a typical first person experience and instead of being armed with a weapon, you are armed with a portal gun that allows you to effectively manipulate the environment around you. It mixes elements of puzzles, logic, physics, and first person movement to create a very suspenseful experience. Due to the simplicity of the mechanics, there's not much else to say, except full marks from me. The mechanics of Stronghold 2 is a good mix of both an economy game and a real-time strategy battle game, with some incredible detail on both fronts. The idea is to grow your castle by keeping your peasants happy and making money, whilst fending off castle sieges. You make money by selling goods or raising taxes, but you have to balance that against the happiness of your people. If you squeeze your peasants too hard on taxes and don't provide sufficient entertainment, food and justice, they will leave your castle, which means you can't produce weapons or gather materials to build a castle. The troops and war machines all serve a specific purpose. It's a very intricate plate spinning exercise and the challenge makes for a memorable experience. It is, however, quite unbalanced. For example, the only military hey, unit I really use are the crosswomen, which are disproportionately powerful. This makes it difficult to appreciate other branches of military tactics. Also, if you don't design your criminal justice system to be artificially efficient by placing the courthouses, guards, and torture devices directly around where the peasants live, then your crime rate just stays elevated no matter what. And people leave your castle even if you have amazing events like jousting and travelling shows. Now, secondly, storytelling. Portal 2's story introduces you to a pretty epic underground world of test rooms. It's mysterious and makes you want to work your way through the physics labyrinth to find out more. Out of tests. We're not going to release this stuff into the wild until it's good and damn ready, so as long as you keep yourself in top physical form, there will always be a limo waiting for you. Say goodbye, Carolyn. Goodbye, Carolyn. She is a gem. The story and the levels are fairly linear, but that doesn't take away from the creativity and randomness within each room. Throughout the game, there are all sorts of hints as to who is behind all this madness, and you're never quite sure who to trust, especially since one of your companions is a potato. Ow! Ordered this bird for me? Oh, thanks. <sighs> Portal 2's story is interesting in that it's mostly told through objects of a time gone by and slowly unraveling a mystery, which definitely left a positive gaming experience for me. I will say that the plot did let it down somewhat in that it wasn't particularly original, and there wasn't a particularly strong connection between the mechanics of the game and the story itself. They just felt like they were forced to work together. Stronghold 2's story simply follows either a military campaign or an economy campaign, both of which act as tutorials. These are actually quite useful. I fully admit though I never finished the campaigns because I just wanted to create my own castle and economy in a sandbox skirmish. I liked clicking into the individual characters or animals to find out what they were doing. Come on! Go, go, go! Backbreaking work this, but honest. So, thirdly, the aesthetics of these games. Portal 2 keeps a very clean, almost minimalist 3D first-person environment, reminiscent somewhat of the Half-Life series. No surprises there, since both created by Valve. 
As indicated earlier, when discussing the storytelling, the environment, colors, shapes, and objects all point to an abandoned, desolate underground world. The sound design and the music also really add to this effect. On Stronghold 2, visually speaking, the detail really lends itself to a rich, functioning world. Sections of walls will literally degrade when damaged. My favorite is peeking into the granary to see stacks of bread piling up. Makes me hungry. Sadly, it's the audio that's not very good. Specifically, the voice acting just grates on me. It just seems like extreme caricatures of certain people. Sha! Peasants are dying from disease. The stockpile is full, my lord. Just so we are clear, next time I catch you withholding money, I will be cooking more than your books. It sort of becomes a bit annoying after you've played for a while. Now, finally, the technology. As far as I understand, Portal was essentially developed as an extensive mod for Half-Life 2, using Valve's source physics-based engine, and creating a puzzle game out of it. There isn't a whole lot more to it than that, and most of the innovation is in the mechanics. But having this as the basis of your gameplay allows for a very consistent experience, and the relative realism of the Havoc source engine makes it relatable in an exciting way. Stronghold 2's technology isn't earth-shattering because it doesn't really need to be. It's what one expects of an RTS game. So which game gives the best experience? Well, the winner goes to Portal 2. The overall experience, the atmosphere of rusty despair, loneliness, iconic character arcs and storylines, entertaining use of physics within the game and great physics engine itself, means that it beats out the slightly unbalanced medieval economy and questionable voice acting of Stronghold 2. Notice that I focused on the negative things for Stronghold 2, even though it is still a game that I enjoy. Really, it only takes a couple of weak elements to change your experience of the whole game. I think this is quite a good way of exploring new ideas, or improving your game to either suit the audience or fine-tune the various elements. The ultimate goal is to create a certain experience for the players. It's easy to lose sight of one of these aspects during the game development process. If you just wanted to make a simple pixel art RPG, there's not a huge benefit to using, for example, Unreal Engine. Ready, to those wanting to develop a visual novel, there's not much point overthinking the mechanics of gameplay when the experience is borne out by great storytelling and aesthetics. At the same time, it helps you to think about the boundaries and balance of each of these elements. What if, for example, we looked again at the technology aspect of Portal 2? What if it was paired up with VR? To really make the most of it, you'd need to make a moving platform which flipped people around and gave them the sensation of flying through portals. If we looked again at Stronghold 2 and gave it dreamy visuals and voice acting which isn't so cartoonish, think of a game that you love and apply these principles of mechanics, storytelling, aesthetics and technology. And if you want, analyze them in the comments below. I'd love to see what game experiences you've enjoyed and how these four elements shine through and complement each other to give you that specific experience. I will eventually test my own game against these principles once I'm finished, because it's nearing completion and I know that if I dwell on them too much, then I'll never get my own game done. Until next time, take care and goodbye.